Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Sanchez versus Terman. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Miss Sanchez, you say today's DNA results mean everything. You are spiritually married to the defendant, but claim his denial that he fathered your eight-month-old son has stopped him from legally marrying you. You need paternity proof to save this relationship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Terman, you doubt you are Jordan's father and say your marriage is not a real legal marriage, and it won't be, unless Ms. Sanchez stops lying to you. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Sanchez, why is today's result so important to you? It's important to me to save my marriage with my husband because this has gone on for two years of accusations and lies and the fact that he doesn't trust me. It's very hurtful and it, it means a lot to me today that we prove once and for all that he's the father of my son and put it all to bed after this. Why are you here, Mr. Terman? Uh, I'm here because, like she said, we got married, but I just, I couldn't go through with it because there's too many trust issues. And I feel like if you don't have trust, you can't go forward with the relationship, and I don't believe he's mine. So I want to find out. So this paternity question literally has your marriage, your legal marriage, on hold. Mm -hmm. yes. You refuse to move forward, and you're basically living in not just legal limbo, but also love limbo. Yes, and I think it's so important for a child to have both parents to grow up in a functional household. Mr. Terman, can you please tell the court, how did you meet Miss Sanchez? Oh, well, we met on Tinder. And I'm swiping, I'm swiping, and I came across her profile, and I super liked. So super like is when it goes directly to them so they know somebody likes you. And so she liked me back, we connected. We were supposed to hang out the first night, and she declined because she was with somebody else she met from Tinder. So the second night is when we actually hung out. She came over, um, we had some drinks, one thing led to another, and we had sex the first night. The first night you met? Yes, it was the first night. That's definitely a super swipe, <laughs> super like, whatever you called it. <laughs> okay, so you meet and you have sex the first night? Yes, ma'am. Unprotected? Yes. <laughs> Miss Sanchez, I have to ask you, because he said you went on a date before, were you dating multiple men at the time? No. But when you met Mr. Terman, he was just what? So nice, yeah. handsome, you just decided you're gonna have sex with him on the first night? All of the above, plus all the added, um, alcohol and... <laughs> You know. That'll do it. Blame it on the alcohol. All right, so, Mr. Terman, did you believe after you had the first date and first <clears throat> sexual encounter with Miss Sanchez that you all were exclusive? So I felt that we were exclusive, but me and her had two different ideas of what talking is. To me, talking is... What? No, what does talking even mean? I talk to a lot of people. What does that mean? That means nothing to me. We had no... no ground See, rules. That's, that's where a lot of the trust issues came in, because I'm thinking one way, she's thinking another way. And I showed my friends pictures of her, because I'm hype. I'm like, she beautiful, she matched with me. We met. And so I show them pictures, and they send me a video like, yo, isn't this the girl you're talking to? <laughs> she's at a bar giving somebody else her number, it looks like. Nope. So it just started to form, like, issues nope. with trust. If she slept with me the first night that we met, then what would... What would... I mean, she probably could have slept with him the first night. Did you bring it up? Did you say, oh, I saw you give your information to this guy? Yeah, I did. And she kept the same attitude, like... Because how, how could I know what's wrong if we're just talking? Oh. I didn't feel guilty about that. Well, she's being honest. You were on direct dial and she was on the party line. Right. <laughs> then there was a... There's another situation where I'm out with my friends 
and another guy who I've just seen around, I don't really know him personally, he stops me and he's like, hey, man, are you talking to Gabby? And he goes, you should be careful, man. I heard she messes with a lot of dudes. And I'm like... What? That's strange to me because that's how we met. We did mess around on Tinder. So that looks like, that looks like true information for him to randomly come up to me and tell me that. There were people that I was swiping through, matching with, and having conversations oh. with. So how many conversations did you have open when you were with Mr. Turbo? Exactly. <laughs> we were just talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't... So I'm right. You was on the party line, and you had stopped swiping. Yes. And you was on automatic swipe. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Did you ever get any physical evidence that Ms. Sanchez was with someone else? Yes, yeah, Sharon, I did. So we went to the grocery store. We went to the grocery store and um, we came back. So I go to the trunk to get the groceries or whatever. And I find men's boxers in the trunk. <laughs> Now, I know for sure these aren't mine. I'm like, whose are these? These are not mine. What? So... Jerome, I, that's, I, I don't that's even know if I want to see happened. that evidence, though. <laughs> you want to go get it? They wash it? <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Oh! You know I'm a germaphobe. Put it on this pen. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> Men's boxers. <laughs> Miss Sanchez, how did these men's boxer shorts get in your trunk? Okay, because I had done laundry at my family member's house. I have male family members, and that's a lie because there was more than just one thing of boxers. There was socks in there. There was all kinds of random I stuff in there. I didn't see it. I'm sure you didn't. Oh. But a whole pair of men's boxer shorts is the one thing in your trunk out of all the laundry? That's an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> but gotcha. that's exactly what happened. That's it. That's it. And then after all this, you find out you're pregnant. Not exactly that way. He took me to Vegas for my birthday. And on that trip is when we had sex again, unprotected. And I know for a fact that I conceived October 20th. That's my birthday. So that... In Vegas. Mm-hmm. On October 20th. Mm-hmm. But I have... I have proof that October 15th, a friend of mine, Mr. Stevenson, seen her at a bar talking to somebody else. And I what? have this statement right here. Let me see that evidence, Jerome. And you believe that Jordan could have been conceived on this night. Absolutely, Your Honor. This statement <laughs> says, so my friend Joel back around October showed me a girl he met and was starting to talk to on Tinder back when I was in California. But like mid-October, I was at a bar club and I saw her there talking to another guy, feeling on him. <laughs> I recorded it and sent him the snap of her giving her number to him and that's the statement from your friend. Yes, Your Honor. And that date was what? October 15th, and I believe that could have been the conception date. It looks bad. It looks bad. I get that. I understand that. Well, the only way to figure that out, let me grab my conception calculator and see what's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> when is Jordan's birthday? His birthday is July 9th. Birthday, July 9th. 2018, mm -hmm. and then I'll press calculate. Sex likely between October 15th and October 21st, 2017. Exactly, the date my friend seen her at the bar talking to the guy. So I think it's possible that she went home with that guy and like me and her had sex on the first night, could have been the same situation. I never slept with that person, never. So how is this doubt eating away at you. Jordan is eight months old. Beautiful baby. You're supposed to be happy and buying little toys and tickling feet. And how is this doubt eating away at you? I mean, it... I'm doing all those things, like you said, but 
a lot of the arguments that we have come from this situation. So it just causes a lot of fights between us and it causes us not to be able to move forward with our relationship. And then there was another situation where I was going to go out with my friend. She didn't want me to. I went out anyways. The next day, we had a talk, and she was upset. And she was like, well, you don't need to come to the hospital because he's not yours. We're good. What? Yeah, she's like, we're good. We don't need you. Don't come to the hospital. He's not yours. Miss Sanchez, after all that, you ring that bell? I know the things that get under his skin and in those moments of tension and I'm trying to hurt him, I'm trying to upset him, I know exactly what to say that's gonna upset him and I knew that would be the number one thing. That's not right, nor was it true, but I, that's what I said. But Miss Sanchez, I mean, come on now. You've stood here and testified how desperately you want your child to have a life mm -hmm. you didn't have. Mm -hmm. Now, you got this man getting videos of you, you admittedly are still on Tinder, having open conversation with folks and meeting folks because you didn't think you were exclusive. You got boxers in your trunk, and now you admittedly say you aren't the father, this child isn't yours? How do you think you could overcome all of that doubt? You really just put the needle on the haystack with that. Mm-hmm. Since then, you know, I've been consistent. He signed the birth certificate. He was there through the pregnancy. Never again did I mention anything like that because that was a mistake and because that's not true, so. Well, you meant to say it because you meant to hurt him. I mean, I'm just thinking as a woman who could think of ways that you could hurt someone you're dating, you could hurt him a lot of other ways mm -hmm. with a lot of other words then the baby isn't yours. Yeah. So, Mr. Terman, have you prepared yourself? Have you really prepared yourself either way? This is a beautiful baby. Eight months, you say you're involved, you're on the birth certificate. With all of this, you still marched your little self in there and signed that birth certificate. I did. Um, you know, I want a family. I want that whole lifestyle. I love her. But if he's not mine, I just don't see myself moving forward, not having that trust in our situation. But see, what I don't understand is you got all these principles, but yet you didn't understand that you have no business signing a birth certificate if you're not gonna marry the girl and you're not gonna have, be a family if it's not your biological child. Because now he's your legal... You're the legal father. You're on the birth certificate. So you might not have the family, but you're gonna have the financial obligation of that child support. I think I've heard enough testimony. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. <laughs> Ms. Sanchez, you look nervous. No. I'm excited. Ms. Sanchez, I have to say, I've heard a lot of these cases, and most times when a young woman is standing here and has this many coincidences, there's something that she hasn't told the court, mm -hmm. and there's something she hasn't also told her partner. Before I open these results, is there something you just want to come clean about, lay on the line, and just admit to so that it's done and you can start to try to establish the trust Mr. Terman says is a prerequisite to the marriage? Is there anything you'd like to say? No, ma'am. Okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Terman versus Sanchez, when it comes to nine-month-old Jordan Terman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Terman, you are the father. <laughs> You are the father. That is your son. That's amazing. That's, that's important to me because, like I said, our love is amazing. What we've grown to become is nothing like we started. So this is just allowing us to keep moving forward.
And I can see how emotional that makes you because it was a, it was weighing on you. Yeah, it was. I think it's important that you acknowledge that pain. And it's important that you're honest about the hurt. Because I can see you genuinely love Ms. Sanchez. And that's why we have counseling and resources for you. And I want you to talk to Dr. Jeff because I think it's gonna be very important to really think about that. You're not alone, we all live with him. Me I and mean, everybody in this, this, this courtroom lives with parts of their childhood that they have to learn to process, come to grips with, overcome, be at peace with, right? So that we can break cycles, okay? So I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned.